Hello, I'm Mike. I'm with Smart Family of Cooling Products, and I'm here to talk to you about winterization of air handlers and uh, equipment that may contain water during storage. That has become a problem, and especially if your location has the equipment being stored in a, a northern state, what happens is during the winter time, the water that is inside the coil will freeze. And just like an auto engine, if you don't have antifreeze in the radiator and, and the engine, what happens is the water expands and it breaks things, it cracks the block. In the case of a cooling coil on an air handler, what happens is all the water that's in the coil will be in the tubes and it will actually expand the tubes until they split and bust open. And it's a very, very costly repair. So what we're here to do is talk to you about how to store the equipment to prevent them from being damaged. And so there's actually a couple of different methods of storing this equipment. If you want to uh, put the glycol in and store it that way, that's fine. And the other method is simply to blow out all the water that might be in the system. So to blow out the water, it's really simple. What you want to do is you want to set the equipment in a location so that all the water that might be in the machine is being forced or drawn towards us. I'll demonstrate with this water bottle. You can see how the water will want to stand level, but if you tilt it, all the water goes to one side. It's the same principle as what's going on inside the air handler. And so we want to slope the machine so that all the water that's in the coil comes this way and there's a header inside there. And we have a drain and we have an air vent and then the connections uh, for the actual chill water to go through. But the idea is to open the, the connection at the top and the drain and take a simple air gun. Allow some time for it to set because it takes a little bit of time for all the moisture in the water to drain to this side of the machine. So give it 30 minutes or something like that and connect a, an air hose. You can do this with nitrogen also. But the idea is to have the drain, both drains open, and to take the air hose and simply go right into the air bleed. You can see how I'm putting it into that tube, just like that. And I'm gonna pressure up the coil getting a little bit of pressure, and I'm watching to see what comes out. And if I'm not getting much, I'm not gonna stop there. It might be that I have to close these and keep this one open and build up some more pressure in the coil and then kind of burp it. And what I mean by that is opening and closing the valve to allow the pressure to keep pushing the water out. Once we've done that and we're satisfied that there's no more water inside the machine, then uh, you can go ahead and, and put it in safe storage. You might also want to do some other things to protect it. It might be that you want to, keep, you want to put some caps on, on here so that no rain or any kind of moisture can get back into it. And so those are some of the things you can do if you simply use air to remove the water that's in the machine. The other thing you can do is you can fill it full of a glycol solution, an antifreeze solution. You have to be careful doing that because you have to have the right mixture because of uh, where you might be in the country, it might take more or less glycol to actually have the right uh, solution concentration to be able to provide the necessary protection. You can go on the internet and you can get this chart. It's all over the place. This is a ethylene glycol solution freeze point chart. And it provides the information based on a percent and the temperature you're trying to achieve. Simply getting down to zero isn't necessarily enough, especially with some of the cold freezes we've been seeing. You want to get down to at least minus 10, minus 20 or more. So that means that your solution mix has to be at least around 50%. Now, you don't want to fill it completely with uh, glycol either because that ruins the concentration as well and it doesn't provide the protection you need. 
So if you're doing this with glycol, you might have to buy it either pre-mixed or you might use one of our tanks and a pump and put the uh, necessary amount of glycol in there, mix it with water and pump it around and mix it, stir it up, making sure that you have a good bleed. Then you're going to use a tool like this. This is a refractometer and so you can get this at a lot of automotive uh, repair uh, suppliers. You might even be able to go online and buy this off of Amazon or something like that. But the way you use this is you get a little uh, sample of the glycol. It has a little sample droplet and you suck a little bit up into it and then you open this little thing, this little window and put a drop or two right on this portion right here and close it. Now you're going to hold it up to light and look through it and what you're going to see is a scale and there's going to be a shadow line inside there. And if you look really careful, you can see what percent it's telling you. And based on that information along with the chart, you'll know exactly where your freeze point is on the solution that you're going to use. Now having done that, what you want to do is pump it in through the drain the drain port. So all of our machines have a fitting and we can take a simple water hose connected to a pump like you see right there and that pump is going to pump the fluid into the coil. So naturally you're going to have to open the vent at the top and you open it here and let it fill it up. This will be closed, this will be closed, perhaps you'll have plugs for these but keep the vent open at the top. And you're going to keep pumping until you get that fluid to come out of the top. Once you've done that with the mixed glycol, then you're protected. So these are some of the things that are necessary to keep this equipment during uh, the winter time when they're not being used. As well, we provide a lot of documentation and instruction. You'll notice that we have a tag right here that indicates winterization. And also we have a bulletin that's available on our website and it gives this instruction. It also gives you an idea of uh, how many gallons of uh, volume is inside that coil. So you can see right there. This will let you know how much glycol you're going to have to buy. And so if you do that, then you will protect this equipment during the winter time.